Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Circles, Finding Pi. We're going to be looking at the relationship between a couple parts of our circle. First, I'm going to represent my circumference, which is around my circle, with this pink line. I'm going to then go ahead and take the pink line as if it was a piece of string and lay it flat after I have wrapped it around the distance of my circle. This going around the circle is known as the circumference. The next part of the circle I'll be looking at is going from end to end on the widest part of the circle, which means I'll be going through the center. And this is called our diameter. So let's get started. First, here I have my circle I'll be working with today. I've got a table and I've got my ruler. I'm going to be using the centimeter side of the ruler, which goes from 0 to 30. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is pretending as if that pink line is a piece of string that I have measured around this circle. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch the piece of string out. Next, I'm going to take my ruler and I want to make sure that I put the zero part of the ruler at the end of my line and not the edge of the ruler at my line. This is to make sure that I am starting my measurement at zero. This is the most important part for measuring. When I do that, I see that I have a measurement of 22 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my table. The next part of my table asks me to measure the diameter. So I'm going to draw this blue line going across. I'm just drawing this line so that I can see it better, but you're going to be holding the ruler up to the widest part of the circle and measuring that part of the circle. And you can accomplish that by holding up your ruler and kind of going down the circle until you get to the widest part. Here again, I want to make sure that this zero is aligned with the edge of my line. And on this end, I notice that it stops at seven centimeters. So I'm going to add that to my table. Today we're investigating pi and pi is a relationship. So our relationship is going to be between circumference and diameter. So if I go ahead and write 22 over seven, that is my circumference two my diameter. 22 sevenths is an approximation for pi. If I divide those two numbers, I get about 3.14. I'm going to be using this symbol to show approximately. Now, does this work for every circle? That is what you're going to be investigating today. So let's be clear. Is pi 3.14? Or is it 22 sevenths? The answer is that it's actually neither. The reason why is because both 22 sevenths and 3.14 are just approximations for pi. If you put 22 divided by 7 into your calculator, you would end up with a decimal that is more than just the thousand, hundreds and thousands place. We use our thousands place to estimate our hundreds place and end up with 3.14. If you were to use the pi button on your calculator, you would notice a different string of numbers after the hundredths place. In fact, these are the first 400 digits of pi. Notice that none of the numbers seem to repeat themselves and there isn't any particular pattern. Pi goes on and on and on and doesn't actually have an ending. So it makes sense that we're using approximations when we're just trying to find a value for our circles. So just to go ahead and do a quick recap, we know that if we look at the circumference or around the circle and we find the relationship between circumference and diameter going through the circle, we found pi. Let's test this out with other circles. So today you'll be testing out other circles to find what is pi. Pi, we know now is our ratio. It's the ratio of circumference to diameter or around to across the circle. For finding pi, measure to find the circumference and diameter and then divide. And you should end up with an approximation. Let's see if your approximation is the same as 3.14. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other videos. Until next time.